now we get into some back back towards some of that psychological issues that guys are coming up against. We're beginning to learn a new word for someone who'd had a bad scare who was losing his nerve. We said he was shook. English majors, such as me, wondered why it wasn't shaky or shaken or something grammatical, but it was always shook, and you knew what it meant. It had little to do with the old world war shell-shocked. That was another very precisely defined thing that came from being too close to an incoming shell. Shook was nerves in general, and once you had a man who was really shook, you tried to get rid of him because he was no good to you anymore. It was the 76s coming in flat and fast, or mortars dropping on you, or fear of mines, or maybe too many duck blinds and night ambushes, or a wind that never stopped blowing. Those were what made you shook. And so he's actually, he's saying that it's different from being Mm shell-shocked, because he's saying that shell-shocked was a precisely defined thing that came from being too close to an incoming shell. And they've actually, they've actually, that's not true. Yeah, shell shocked wasn't only from. In fact, it was not just from the concussion. The concussion absolutely causes problems in your mind, mm-hmm. but shell shocked World War One, any war that you go into, it's it's PTSD, right? It's right. it's it's fear. It's the thinking things. It's a good thing you're to die. It's all those things building up. Yeah, fear of losing your legs. It's all those things. So when he's talking about, he says, "Oh, it's not the same thing as shell shock." But then he says, "It was the seventy sixes, which are flat trajectory rounds coming at big giant rounds coming at you, mortars dropping on you, fear of mines." So it's being afraid. That's what he's talking about. Is what makes you shook, and it's the same thing in World wow. War One, World War Two. You go to any war, and you want to know what causes psychological damage. It's prolonged fear of maiming death and seeing your friends getting maimed and killed mm-hmm. that's what i believe it is yeah the shell uh what i heard that um shell shocked is like when they say shit the expression shell referred to your head like your shell got rattled you maybe know? they use that in football or something um oh, yeah, but maybe. but you know for me shell shock the, the reason they said it was from shelling you know mm, that's what they said in world war and again, go to. I've said this on the podcast before. Go on YouTube and watch the guys that came out of World War One that were shell shocked. It's it's horrible. It's a horrible, horrible thing to see, and it like makes just makes you feel so uh, thankful that you didn't have to go through what these guys went through. Yeah. And but it's the same. You know, it was to an extreme. And the worst part about World War One, I've talked about this too, is like when those guys reached their breaking point. They got called. They got sent back to England. They're like, oh, this guy's a coward. Yeah. And of course, the people that are calling him cowards were people that were never on the line. I mean, yeah. a lot of them. And so, yeah, it's really, it's really horrible. I think we do a, a much better job of taking care of guys that, hey, yo, know, you went and did this for your country, and you went through a little bit too much. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. Let's give you a break. Let's give you a breather. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And take care of take care of our veterans. Something we absolutely. We do better then, but we always need to focus on taking care of our veterans. Mm. Here's an example of, you know, what what these what condition these guys get into. Back to the book. The most bizarre was an enlisted man in dog company who'd been out a long time and who had been in a lot of fighting, a fine Marine, a good solid man. But now, with the rotation draft beckoning, he began to act funny refusing to wash or shave and he would not get out of his sleeping bag that was the strangest part he didn't refuse to muster or go on duty but he went everywhere in his sleeping bag he cut out the bottom of it so he could walk taking mincing little steps his arms and bodies completely inside the bag and the hood of the bag over his head only his bristly face showing He lined up for meals that way. I don't know how he handled going to the head. Max said it was a psychological return to the womb. I didn't know what to make of it. He only had a few days left, and no one wanted to run him up or bring charges because he'd been a very good man. But people moved away when they saw him coming because they knew he was spooked and because he had begun to smell much worse than the rest of us. Maybe he was shitting in the bag. Some people insisted he did. He didn't seem to mind being snubbed as he hoped, as he hopped around the battalion with those little steps, content to be in his bag. He was shook, gone mental, some said. And I think that's the reason I highlighted that one is because they're taking care of him. 
they're like, hey, we're not going to bring him up and charge. Get a few days. Hey, let him walk around right. in a sleeping bag. It's all good. Mm-hmm. Now, hopefully, they got him some help. Yeah. When he got out, or when he when he got got off the front and said, hey, you need to go talk to somebody and you know relax a little bit. Give this guy a little breather. 